Hello everybody, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Turn your King James Bible to Revelation chapter 17. This is going to be part two of Babylon, the mystery of Babylon. Verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now, many waters, right? All right, verse 2. All right, so they're going to show you the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now, we're going to explain what the many waters are, but let's keep going. Verse 2. All right, so the whore, verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Spiritual fornication, right? And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Now, people are very quick to point out that the Vatican, these are the colors of the Vatican, and I won't deny that. That's true. However, these are also the colors of the Levitical priesthood in the Old Testament. The temple priests. So the Vatican loves to mimic the things of the Bible. Now, the woman has a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Remember that. Because there's a verse in the Bible that says that Babylon hath been a golden cup in the hand of the Lord. And I'm kind of paraphrasing, but we'll get to that. All right, verse 5. Here's the punchline. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Now, Babylon was the first great world, kingdom, and empire. And what's interesting is Nebuchadnezzar, in chapter 4, if I remember correctly, he actually wrote the fourth chapter of the book of Daniel under what I believe is the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But he also made a, an image, an icon, with a head of gold, remember? And they wanted uh, everybody in the kingdom to worship it. So Nebuchadnezzar made an, a, an image or a statue and demanded that all the people in his kingdom worship it. And uh, hopefully you've read about the three, Hebrew, the three Hebrews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that refused to do it, and they were thrown into the furnace. Well, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, he... Did, had some good things, and then he did some bad things. But um, we'll get to that later. So, mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So this kingdom of Babylon was the, well, in the introduction that I did prior to this, um, uh, you know, it's the Tower of Babel and then Babylon. So that was the beginning of 
false religions. Verse 6, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Huh. So, let's take a look at the uh, many waters upon the, that the whore sits. All right, let's go to verse 7. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman. Ah, there's a mystery here, people. And we're supposed to dig out the mysteries of God. I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. Perdition means to fall. Judas Iscariot was called the son of perdition. Oh yeah. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Do you know that the names of those for salvation were written in the book of life from the foundation of the world? When they beheld the beast that was and is not, and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Now, there are a number of cities that sit on seven hills. From what I understand, Seattle, Washington, Microsoft, your computer, right? Uh, Washington, D.C., District of Columbia. Columbia is the goddess, people. Um, Moscow, Russia has seven hills from what I understand. You know, communism. Communism murdered many, many, many millions. Some people think uh, it was between 50 and 80 million people uh, from over the last hundred years that communism murdered. And of course, let's not forget the Vatican and Rome, seven hills. And guess what? Jerusalem is also on seven hills. Remember, Jesus always used to say, uh, let us go up to Jerusalem. Oh, yeah. So, but there's more than that. But uh, I just mentioned the, you know, more uh, I would you say significant ones. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short time. Verse 11. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seventh, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Verse 14. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. Amen to that, right? For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So you got to be called, chosen, and faithful. Ah, here's the punchline. Remember the woman sits on many waters? Here's the punchline. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. 
And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Now, a lot of different theories about what the great city is, but we'll get more to that later. Now, uh, if you want to know the, um, I, I try to lay a foundation. Now, people, you got to realize the Old Testament is the foundation of the Bible. If you don't have a good foundation, you're not going to have a good roof to cover you with. You know, the Old Testament is what, well, how should I put this? The New Testament is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. The Old Testament's like a shadow, but then the New Testament is the object casting the shadow. But the Old Testament it will explain types and symbols of what the New Testament means. So it's very important. If you don't have a working knowledge of Babylon in the Old Testament, you know, when you read the New Testament, it won't make any sense. I mean, you know, come on, let's face it. You get a, a novel, a book, right? You're going to read the last chapter and think you understand? No. you got to start at the beginning. You know, the first chapter lays out over all the foundational stuff. Well, that's what the Old Testament is. And I've had people say, well, I'm a New Testament Christian. I don't need that Old Testament. That's just a book of laws and God's failures and is dealing with the Jews. And I'm not a Jew, so I'm a Christian. So I'm just going to read the New Testament. Well, guess what? They don't read the Old Testament, but really they don't read the New Testament either. So, why is a foundation important? Well, let's go to Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Jesus says, And why call ye, ye me, and why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Yeah, why do you call me Lord and you don't do the things that I tell you to? That's the Bob translation. Verse 47. Whosoever cometh to me, whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them. Ah, you see, even the devils can hear the sayings of Christ, but they don't do them. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and digged deep, and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against, I'm sorry, upon that house, and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. You know what, people? Let me tell you something. You know why they could build those high-rises, those skyscrapers in New York City? Because when they dig down far enough, they hit the bedrock made of granite. And let me tell you something. If there's a harder rock than granite, I don't know what it is. I mean, I'm not a geologist, but uh, granite's some pretty tough stuff. You, you want to wear out some drill bits? Try drilling holes in granite. So, he's like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the storm arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not, ah, but he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth. One of the other gospels says, built a house on the sand, against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell. And the ruin of the house was great. See, people, you got to build your house on the rock. And the Bible is Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22 and everything in between. 
Now, what is this rock we're supposed to build our house upon? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. Ignorant doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means you don't know something. And like I've said many times, when it comes to rocket science and brain surgery, I'm ignorant. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Now, Paul's writing to the Greeks in Corinth. And yes, there are some of the tribe of Judah there. So he's telling them that our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. He's talking about the Exodus when Moses struck the, the Red Sea and they passed over on dry, uh, dry ground and Moses' troops, uh, chariots, tried to do the same thing and the, the sea closed up on them and drowned them. That's what they're talking about. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? The manna, people. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. You see, people, the church was with Moses in the wilderness. And you know there was a rock, and Moses was told to strike the rock, and it would provide water for probably 100,000 people. I don't know how many people came out, but I, I think it was hundreds of thousands of people, probably like a quarter million. Boy, that's, you got to put out a lot of people. I mean, a lot of water uh, for that many people in a desert. Let me tell you something. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they all drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. All right. All right, a little bit of background. The, uh, in the days of Solomon's son, you had uh, King David. Well, first you had King Saul, and then God gave the kingdom to King David. And then gave it to Solomon. And then in the days of Solomon's son, the northern tribes of Israel split off from Judah. Well, they went into apostasy really quick. And then the Assyrians, whose capital was Nineveh, that I mentioned in the last study, uh, they were the ones that Jonah preached to. You know, Jonah, the book of Jonah, Jonah and the Whale. Uh, and then they took northern Israel captive. Now, northern Israel never went back to the land. They were scattered abroad. That's an interesting study in and of itself. But uh, it's more like history than anything else, because the Bible doesn't record exactly where they went. However... The southern kingdom of Judah, part of uh, Syria took part of Judah too. But when they tried to take Jerusalem, God destroyed their army, the Assyrians. But then, years later, even after Judah had watched Israel being carried off, and all the prophets had warned you know, for their apostasy. Did they repent and listen and straighten up and fly right? No. We, we're going to do what we want to do. That was their motto, I guess. So, God said, all right, I tell you what, I'm going to bring Babylon upon you. And nobody believed Jeremiah. Jeremiah, to me, is kind of a depressing book because, guess what? Uh, I read it, and I can see the United States. You could take Jerusalem and substitute the United States. I mean, we are no better than Israel or Judah was during this time period. Or, or if you're from the EU or Britain or whatever, um, 
We're a bunch of heretics. All right, so. Let's go to Jeremiah. I'm just going to skip around a little bit because this is mostly going to be, we're tr I'm trying to do the New Testament, but we've got to do the Old Testament, delay the foundation. Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 4. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself and to all thy friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and thine eyes shall behold it. And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captive into Babylon, and shall slay them with the sword. Read the book of Daniel. That's recorded. Jeremiah 25, 11. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Ah. And then in uh, verse 12, And it shall come to pass, when seventy years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans, and make it perpetual desolations. Now, what's perpetual mean? It means forever. God told Jeremiah that Babylon, when it was, you know, after 70-something years, um, the Medes and the Persians came, and they conquered Babylon, and they destroyed it, and they allowed Judah to return to Jerusalem. You can read about that in the end chapter, uh, in the book of Daniel. You can read about that in Nehemiah and Ezra. God said after 70 years, you'd return. And they did. All right, Jeremiah 27 and verse 6. And now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. God calls Nebuchadnezzar his servant. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. And the beasts of the field have I given him also to serve him. Jeremiah 29.10 For thus saith the Lord, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 28. For therefore he sent, us, he sent unto us in Babylon, saying, This captivity is long. Build ye houses, and dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. Oh yeah, good idea. Plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Jeremiah said in verse uh, chapter 42, verse 11, Be not afraid of the king of Babylon. Now we're talking about those that are obedient to the Lord, those that listen and do. Remember, Jesus said, hear the word and do them. You know, just because you hear the word doesn't mean nothing. I mean, if God says, thou shall not kill, you might hear the word, but if you're a hitman for the mafia, what good is, you know, you're not doing what he says to do. Why callest thou me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? But Jeremiah 42.11, he, Jeremiah tells those that believe the Lord, Be not afraid of the king of Babylon, of whom you are afraid. Be not afraid of him, saith the Lord, for I am with you to save you and to deliver you from his hand. Same thing could be said of the what's what's coming upon our nations, right? Jeremiah 43.10 And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will send and take Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will set his throne upon these stones that I have hid, and he shall spread his royal pavilion 
over them. All right. All right. Uh, Jeremiah fifty seventeen. We write, Israel is a scattered sheep. Didn't Jesus say, my sheep hear my voice and follow me? Israel is a scattered sheep. The lions have driven him away. First, the king of Assyria hath devoured him. And last, this Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, hath broken his bones. Now, guess what? Remember we were talking about the um, golden cup of Babylon, the, the woman with the golden cup in her hand? Let's go back and read that again. All right, let's go Revelation chapter 17, uh, verse 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand. Bingo. Having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. All right. Jeremiah 51, 7. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. You see, the Old Testament will help explain the New Testament, and the New Testament will explain the Old Testament. They go hand in hand, people, like a glove. Now, in, Rev, uh, in Daniel chapter 3, verse 1, we read that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits. Now, a cubit is approximately half a meter for you people in the EU, or about 18 inches, or, you know, half a yard. Uh, it was considered from the tip of the fingers to the elbow. Um, so the a height was three score cubits. So it was about uh, 60 times half a meter. So about 30, I guess 30 meters approximately. Or for those of you guys that uh, about the, from the goal, goal, goal line to the 30 yard line, that's a pretty tall image of gold. Uh, let's see, and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Now, Nebuchadnezzar demanded that everybody, when they heard the music, they had to fall down and worship this image. He made an image. Guess what the false prophet does in the book of Revelation? He makes an image, the image of the beast. You see, the Old Testament, Satan's plan is no different. What he does in the Old Testament, he'll do in the New Testament. Nothing really changes. Now, you can read Daniel chapter 3 and read about uh, the three Hebrews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that didn't want to worship uh, the image. And King Nebuchadnezzar threw him into the furnace. And there was a fourth man in the furnace. I think it was Christ. And uh, they came out of the fire. 
They weren't, they weren't hurt. Uh, the guys that threw them into the fire, they died. Nebuchadnezzar's uh, soldiers, <laughs> they died. But the, the three Hebrew children, or men, no, they didn't. So, now, in Daniel chapter 4, verse 30, we read, The king spake, King Nebuchadnezzar, and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Oh yeah, he was lifted up in pride. Oh yeah, Babylon is so great because of me. No. God gave Nebuchadnezzar this. But he, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, there were times he knew and honored the Lord, and then there's times when he was lifted up in pride. In the book of Romans, chapter 13 and verse 1, we read, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. You want to know why the Britain, the EU, and the USSA has evil rulers? Because the people are evil. If we had godly people, we'd have godly rulers. Now, we're supposed to obey the rulers unless, of course, they tell us to uh, do something against God's word. That's what I can tell you. I don't necessarily agree, but then again, my I'm going to use my mind uh, I, over and against the mind of God. God put, you know, Obama became president because God put him there. Trump's there because God put him there. Uh, let's face it. Angela Merkel, that uh, deviless from uh, Germany, she's there because God wants her there. In John chapter 19, Christ is speaking to Pilate. Let's read verse 1. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe. Now purple was the sign of royalty. So they're, they're mocking Jesus here. And they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. Boy, I wouldn't want to be them on Judgment Day. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him, and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now, you know what? When uh, My note here. When you've got crowds of people hanging around a person, and Jesus had you know, thousands of people around him at times, you better believe that Pilate would send spies to listen to what this guy is saying, you know, to report back. Because, you know, when you're in charge of a, an area under Roman rule, you don't want riots going on. You don't want to, you want to squash insurrection. And you better believe you're going to send more than one spy, and these spies are not going to know each other. So, you know, you better believe Pilate was keeping an eye on Jesus and what he was saying and what he was doing. So, 
The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. You better believe Pilate knew that Christ was doing miracles. Pilate had to have known this. Verse 8. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. Pilate was afraid. The chief priests, they weren't afraid. All right, so, and Pilate uh, and went again into the judgment hall. So Pilate went into the judgment hall and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. You know, everybody, uh, almost all the churches will tell you, oh, it was Romans that killed Jesus. But what does verse 12 say? And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. See, the Jews were threatening Pilate, saying, you let this guy go, and we're going to go to Caesar and tell him that you let this guy go that calls himself a king. See, that was treason against the Roman emperor, and that was punishable by death. So Pilate's between a rock and a hard place here. So who killed Christ? Not the Romans. No way. All right, let's keep going. All right, let's go to uh, Daniel chapter 4. We're going to read something here, starting in verse 1. All right, let's start reading verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the king, unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the Most High God hath wrought toward me. See, Nebuchadnezzar wrote chapter 4 of Daniel, probably under, I'm sure, under inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Verse 3, How great are his signs, and how mighty are his wonders! His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. See, Nebuchadnezzar was humbled and acknowledged the Lord. Verse 4, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in mine house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream." Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, and I told a dream before them, and they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But at the last, Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. Eh, you kind of wonder about this, right? Uh, the spirit of the holy gods. Eh, I don't know. And before him I told the dream, saying, O Pel Belteshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. Well, maybe, I don't know, maybe Nebuchadnezzar is not going to be saved. I don't know. We'll find out one day, right? I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and no secret troubleth thee. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof. Thus were the visions of mine head in my bed, I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. 
Now, let's go to Daniel chapter 2 for a second. Uh, Daniel interpreted another one of Nebuchadnezzar's dreams. And I covered that in the last series, but we're just going to touch on it briefly. Daniel chapter 2, verse 37. He's giving him the interpretation of the dream. You know, the head of gold, the breast of silver, and then the, uh, let's see, the, the brass, I think it was his thighs, and then the legs were uh, iron, and then the feet were iron and clay. You can read about that in Daniel chapter 2, or go to my last series where I covered that. So Daniel says, in verse 37, chapter 2, verse 37, Thou, O king, now Daniel's giving Nebuchadnezzar the interpretation of this dream that he had. Thou, O king, art a king of kings. A king of kings. For the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men, men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of heaven of, and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. Remember, uh, Babylon hath been a golden cup in the hand of the Lord. Thou art this head of gold. Verse 39. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee. Oh, yeah. And another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, forasmuch as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things. And as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. So, according, to, as I understand it, Babylon was probably the greatest kingdom that ever lived, or that ever existed. All right, uh, let's go back to Daniel chapter 4. All right, verse 10. Thus were the visions of mine head in my bed. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all. The beasts of the field had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the boughs thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. All right, so, I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher, people say that this is a, an angel, a watcher and an holy one come down came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches. Shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let, let the beasts get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth. Leave the stump of his roots in the earth. Have any of you ever... Uh, had a garden where and you got weeds and you cut the top of the weed but you leave the roots and the thing comes right back right nevertheless leave the stump of his roots in the earth even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field and let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth all right let his heart be changed from man's, and let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times, years, and let seven times pass over him. This matter is by the decree of the watchers, and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the basest of men." Now, this dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Belteshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof, forasmuch as 
All the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able. For the spirit of the holy gods, plural, is in thee. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. Verse 20. The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king. It is thou, O king. So evidently, King Nebuchadnezzar is this tree. It is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reacheth unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one come down from heaven, and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots therein in the earth. Oh yeah, the roots of Babylon are going to grow again in the book of Revelation, right? Even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field, till seven times pass over him. Now remember, this decree is because uh, Nebuchadnezzar's heart is lifted up. He's taking the glory that God, God provided for him. He's taking it, saying it's by his own hands, right? This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my lord the king, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the root, the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins, and break off thy sins by righteousness, and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. All this came upon the king, Nebuchadnezzar. Ah, see, Daniel tells him, break off your sins by righteousness and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. All this came upon the king, Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 29. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon, the king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the majesty by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Oh yes, I did all this by my power. But God has other ideas. Verse 31. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times, or years, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth the, uh, in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and did eat grass as oxen. And his body was wet with the dew of the heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers, and his nails like bird's claws. At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven. Ah, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes upon, unto heaven, and my understanding returned unto me. 
and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Oh yeah, Nebuchadnezzar got humbled. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? In other words, you're not going to go to the Lord and say, What do you think you're doing? Well, you can say that, but it doesn't mean anything. Verse 36. At the same time, my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselor, counselors and my Lord sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are truth, and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. In other words, if you lift yourself up in pride, he's going to knock you down. Oh, yeah. All right, so. I uh, guess we'll go to chapter 5 now. Daniel chapter 5. Now, remember, people, we just read where the, the roots of Babylon are still in the earth. That's a very important point to remember when we get to part three, I'm going to read Daniel chapter five, and then that's it. I'm going to close out part two here, and then um, we'll start on part three, and it'll, we'll, we'll skip over to the New Testament. Well, we'll hit the New Testament. I'll try to finish up in part three. Now, the last series that I did uh, ties into this also. I mean, there's just so much material to cover, so... All right, Daniel chapter 5, verse 1. Belshazzar, now B-E-L, that's how he spells his name, B-E-L-S-H-A-Z-Z-A-R, Belshazzar, B-E-L. B-E-L was the name of a satanic heathen god. So either his father named him this or he named himself this. I mean, would you want to be named uh satan i mean really you know or uh i don't know so evidently nebuchadnezzar's dead and this is his son who took his place belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand belshazzar while he tasted the wine commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem. These are the temple vessels that were used for the holy services in Jerusalem for the Lord. He's going to defile them. He's, he's committing blasphemy here. So, he wants to bring out all these silver and gold cups, which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wines, and his concubines drank in them. Huh. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Oh, yeah. So here it is. You're blaspheming the Lord by using cups that were consecrated unto the Lord in the Lord's temple. You're drinking wine in them to praising the gods, satanic gods, right? Not a good thing to do. Verse 5. Now, this is the son of Nebuchadnezzar. You better believe Nebuchadnezzar had told his son all the stories about what Daniel had done. Or other people had told him too. Maybe his mother, uh, you know, 
I mean, what Daniel did must have been a legend. Any, anybody, any of you people have read the book of Daniel? I mean, come on. This guy had to have known. Verse 5. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Now, can you imagine seeing a, a man's hand, you know, think thing with the Adams family? And it's writing on the wall, just kind of floating in the air, writing something on the wall. I think I'd be uh, a little shocked myself, but verse 6. Then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his lone loins were loosed and his knees smote one against another. In other words, his knees were knocking. That's how scared he was. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Why? It was probably written in Hebrew. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever, let not thy thoughts trouble thee nor let thy countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods, and in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. Ah, Forasmuch as an excellent spirit, knowledge, and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel, which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jewry? I have even heard of thee, that the spirit of the gods is in thee, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof, but they could not show the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of thee, that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now, if thou canst read the writing and make known to to me, the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet, and have a chain of gold about thy neck, and thou shalt be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself, and give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king, and make known to him the interpretation. Verse 18. 5.18. O thou king, the Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whom he would, he slew. And whom he would, he kept alive. And whom he would, he set up. And whom he would, he put down. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beasts, and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointeth it over, over it whomsoever he will. 
And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, hath not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. O oh, yes, son of Nebuchadnezzar, you haven't humbled yourself, you lifted up yourself in pride, and you knew all this. That's the Bob interpretation. Verse 23. But hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives, and thy concubines have drank wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whom, whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Meany, meany, fecal of Harson. This is the interpretation of the thing. Meany, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Fecal, thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. Perez, Thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. The Persians conquered Babylon and destroyed it, people. You know who modern-day Persia is? Iran. The Persians let the children of Judah go back to Jerusalem and rebuilt it. They gave them all the, the everything that pertained to the temple, all these golden things and cups of silver and all that stuff. Let them take them back. So now they want the United States to have a war against Iran. The Persians. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom Babylon. Thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain, and Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about threescore and two years old. Uh, Darius and Cyrus were responsible for the return of Judah to Jerusalem. Like I said, read about it in Ezra and Nehemiah. If I remember correctly, Nehemiah was the king, Ezra was the priest. All right, this is the end of part two. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.